Good morning, afternoon or evening, ladies and gentlemen, all in crypto here and welcome back guys for another daily cryptocurrency market update. If you are finding yourself on the channel for the first time today, do consider becoming a subscriber because we drop an update just like this one every single day at 1pm UK time to help you guys stay up to date with the latest and greatest things happening within the crypto space and the broader markets. And that is a large part of what we're going to be doing in this video. We may be uh, about to experience in the short term a little bit of congestion for the cryptocurrency market. And what we're going to be doing is we're not just going to be looking at crypto, we're going to be looking at the stock market and where that's at and the dollar and where it's at on a pivotal day like today where we have the likes of the non-farm payroll coming out. And employment is a, a very good barometer of how an economy is doing and a strong employment job market may throw a bit of a spanner into the works in regards to rate pricing and things like this, but we'll simplify it all down and uh, really explain it all to you. Um, and, and what we're looking at and why a period of sort of congestion. We, th th there's no doubt in my mind that we are now in an uptrend, guys. You know, we've been accumulating crypto throughout the uh, period of 2023 and we finished the year off rather spectacularly with altcoins to the tune of two to 300% up. Some of them, uh, we did have a couple of altcoins that we were down on, but overall the portfolio did very, very well. We are expecting continuation. You know, a lot of altcoins have just broken out. Yesterday we showed you the uh, chart of injective, and I said engine, which was rather wrong of me, uh, and how that was a very good blueprint for what's to come for many of these altcoins that have just broken out. And typically with a breakout, you get a retest or you get a period of congestion. Uh, we see it in the stock market, we see it across the board before you get that further upside. So further upside is coming. You may be looking at a bit of a store box. Uh, and this, I think, is based more on the broader macro landscape. You know, have the markets got a little bit giddy with uh, interest rates and all this other stuff. So we'll be looking at all that towards the latter half of the video. To kick the video off, though, however, I want to look at some comments that were made by a lawyer over in the US in regards to the rumors that were circulating uh, and, and generated, I guess, from Matrix Port that were essentially saying that they were going to reject um, the Bitcoin spot ETFs. And we looked at Bloomberg senior analyzer analyst on ETFs who essentially said things don't quite add up here. We looked at the fact that Goldman Sachs are in talks with some of the people looking to facilitate the Bitcoin spot ETFs with working with them and JP Morgan's doing the same thing. And, and, and you know, it, an ETF is an inevitability at this point. And actually, um, I think the markets, yes, the news definitely helped them sell off. But more broadly across the uh, landscape, you know, you've got a very strong dollar, which is a bad backdrop for us. You know, the dollar and, and Bitcoin are adversely correlated or the Dixie, I should say, and Bitcoin are adversely correlated. And of course, you've got the likes of the stock market running into resistance. Bitcoin making loads of its targets, Coinbase making its target that we had for it. Uh, and a, a, likely a period, I think, of congestion to take place before we see that further upside. Um, so if that sounds good, guys, strap yourselves in. We are about to dive into it all. And let's kick things off with a little bit of news related um, content, a little bit of news re related reporting. And we know that there were some rumors that were really generated from the Matrix Port article that earlier that day said it was going to definitely get approved. And then they said, oh, actually, we've got intelligence that it's not. And that source was never kind of it never came to the forefront. And actually, I think we've seen the SEC be in talks with many of these um, uh, ETF facilitators, with BlackRock, with Goldman. You know, it, it seems a lot more likely. There's nothing to suggest an ETF is going to get rejected, okay? It might just get delayed a little bit. The inevitability is that you are going to end up with a, a Bitcoin ETF. But this is uh, new. So if the SEC were to deny all Bitcoin ETFs, the applications would immediately sue, just like Grayscale, by the way, that won. Um, and the DC Court of Appeals would again rule that the SEC was arbitrary and capricious, says US securities lawyer James Murphy. So I think that this is, you know, we've come too far. And if you look in the UK right now, very interestingly, those of you that are in the UK that you co use Coinbase would have got, just like what Binance have done, they're all coming into regulatory compliance. We know the US basically... Um, took over Binance essentially and, and, and brought them under their uh, umbrella. Um, and, and that's one of the reasons a Bitcoin spot ETF is likely to, to, to be approved. But we're going to do a whole other video on that, capping that whole saga off. Um, but, you know, an ETF is, is absolutely coming. If you look at things like Coinbase right now, they're sending out and, and all coming into regulatory compliance. We've got more and more people registering with the FCA, more and more people, you know, um, in the UK, this is becoming more regulatory friendly and working with these agencies. And it's all for the inevitability of this market becoming actually recognized as a market, which it still kind of isn't from an institutional and kind of uh, more broader macro point of view, because there's no products around it. You know, it, it, we can't even work out what's a security and what's not. 
that's all still to come and you should be very bullish on that. And, and ultimately 2024, I think, has a great macro backdrop that we've covered plenty of times. Um, and we did at the start of the video, if you missed, uh, at the start of the year, if you missed our first daily market update, please do go and check that out. So lots of really interesting things taking place. Uh, today is an important day. Uh, we'll come over to non-farm payroll in just a second, which is taking place today. But what I want to do first, actually, is I want to go over and I want to look at the Bitcoin chart because our target for Bitcoin from this pattern here, which was an inverse head and shoulders, it was also a stage one base, which we teach in the Patreon. Essentially, you broke out, you've came back for a retest, you've came back again, the target still stood and the target was met and you're now congesting around it. There was on a short term time frame a uh, potential uh, continuation pattern, a pennant, you could call it, you know, th th there's a number of ways to identify this. Um, but it looks a little bit less likely with the kind of slap in the face that Bitcoin had that largely could be attributed to the news from Matrix Port that came out. And I'm showing this because usually once you make a target, a significant target, you you rest, you know, uh, and we see this across the board. You know, if we look at the Nasdaq, for example, which was one of our big longs from last year, we've got lots of stocks, by the way, at the moment we're looking at that are in stage two breakouts. Um, but if you look at the Nasdaq, for example, you know, it perfectly hit its inverse head and shoulders target before having a rest, forming a falling wedge with three impulses in it and then going up and seeing further upside. It's very common that when you, you know, this is resistance overhead, but this is ultimately in a broader uptrend. You know, if we look at something like Apple, for example, it's kind of double topping. You know, there's lots of resistance across the board, not just for crypto, but for the broader markets that there's a correlation there with due to liquidity. If we look at the S&P, for example, you know, it's at all time high resistance. So you've got this kind of a backdrop. You've got Bitcoin making its target. Coinbase was one of our big longs for 2023. You know, we were telling people to accumulate this. or well, not telling people, saying that we were accumulating this in the $30, $40 range. You know, it now sits at, at one point, it got all the way to 185 and at lower down inverse head and shoulders. We're now looking at a broader head and shoulders playing out that's being followed to a T. So we had a, a head and shoulders here that you broke on momentum, retest in a similar Bitcoin way, uh, but now you're forming a bigger head and shoulders. So this is how markets typically move up and down in this kind of nestling head and shoulders. Um, you can see that the smaller head and shoulders target got literally perfectly met, and now you're having a period, a rest period, and the pre-market is looking like it might open slightly down. So I think there's gonna be generally based on what I'm looking at, and also let's bring the dollar into this. Um, you've got resistance for the stock market, you've got, Potential support for the dollar and the dollar being strong. This is a macro headwind that we've had to contend with for, you know, we've always had to contend with. Uh, and this may cause a period of congestion for Bitcoin. Yesterday, we looked at ING and currently where it was at. And we said, look, your altcoins are just here, ladies and gentlemen. I think we had a few different uh, charts for uh, injective. You know, you have this double bottom on injective, just like you've got for many altcoins. When you initially break, you enter this period of congestion before you see that further upside. So altcoins are essentially here. What altcoins am I talking about? Well, you know, we can pick quite a few that are broken out, the likes of Cardano with its breakout, period of congestion before we see that further continuation. Uh, Polkadot, for example, period of uh, congestion before we see that continuation. Retest of the breakout, things like Hedera. You know, across the board, we could we could we could pick out many, but they're ultimately all destined, in my opinion, for higher targets this year. Right now, you're just ending, entering a, a kind of stall box, which coincides with a little bit of a strong dollar, the stock market resistance, Bitcoin making its target, having a bit of a rest. You also have targets made on the Bitcoin crosses. Um, so I would expect a, a period, a little bit of a slow grind, perhaps for the month of January. Um, and even saying this. You know, we're not calling for anything horrific. You might have a bit more of a pullback. Even saying this, you've got to remember that we are in an uptrend and understand the nature of the market that you are in. You know, just because we expect a, a store box, we can be straight back onto we're going higher and January looks great. Once you take out um, and sort of reclaim, I guess, this high. Uh, with the dollar, I don't want to see too much dollar strength. You know, we think the dollar is in a broader downtrend, which supports our entire macro thesis that the market's going to do well. Remember, we were, I think we were one of the only people to get back into crypto literally uh, on the 5th of January. Um, perfect Bitcoin bottom. Altcoins, yeah, we had to ride a bit of volatility, but you usually pay that price of being early. So we think that the dollar is in more of a, a macro downtrend. Um, this was just a sort of retaliation. You are getting a bit of a dollar strength. I wouldn't like to see the dollar get anywhere 
past the sort of uh, 104.1 mark. So we'll see what happens today. You do have uh, non-farm payroll, which of course is a big barometer of the economy. The expectations, and I can't help but feel like they've lowballed this given how the last few have been, is uh, 168,000. Um, we'll change screens here. I'm not so convinced that that's actually going to be the case. I think you could have a higher one. I think the dollar might be rallying on the back end of that. You're also getting a lot of news about inflationary fears in the likes of Europe, which is fueling rate cut decisions. The interesting thing about rate cuts to go over to this now is we have the earliest rate cut the market is expecting in March. I think this is premature. And I think if we get stronger, I think market's got a little bit giddy. And this is what we said the real interesting thing in 2024 is going to be is have the markets priced in rate cuts or have they been too over um, uh, optimistic? And you've got to remember that equity investors are glass half full kind of people. You know, they're happy people. Um, so this is really something to contend with. That being said, true inflation in the United States is reporting that inflation is down at 2.13. The uh, Fed's target is 2%. You know, I think rate I think they're going to hold rates a little bit higher than what people have expected, which could contribute into this kind of stall box that we're talking about. Certainly with non-farm payroll coming out today, uh, it might boost the dollar a little bit. Um, but this is just a sort of, I guess, a pullback, a stall box in, the, in what is now a broader trend to the upside for, for everything. You know, if you look at gold, gold's having a bit of a stall box at that, that resistance. It's, it's really coiling up and ready to, re we saw new all-time highs, but continue in that uh, direction. Uh, this was a comment, uh, traders trim BOE, which is Bank of England rate cut bets, see fewer than 125 basis points at 1.25% uh, this year. So there's a kind of, not, not just to really cap everything off, do right now you at the minute have a lot of uh, resistance coming into play. Uh, previous new all-time highs in some cases for the stock market. You know, you've just broken out, you've made your target on Bitcoin, you've made your target on things like Coinbase that might cause a little bit of a, a break, but you also have a, a perhaps readjusting of how people are weighing up how this year and the forecasts of this year are gonna go from a rate cut point of view, which of course um, will uh, directly affect um, liquidity. And remember markets are forward looking, so they always look six plus months uh, ahead of themselves from an investment point of view. So that's really all we've got for you guys. Hopefully you all have a fantastic Friday. On that note, I'm going to love and leave you. Have a wonderful weekend. We'll be bringing you the latest news over the weekend. And on that note, I'll see you all in the next one. Thanks a lot for watching, guys. See you in the next.